including Glenn's games he played, um, everything else. What's interesting, though, is looking at him in the last year, you look at his champions and what he played, what he won on. He was 6-1 and one on Nidalee, 7-1 and one on Diana, and 8-1 and one on Olaf. Yeah. They're like, I farm really hard, it's about me, I'm the cool guy, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. fight people. Like, that worked for him on PSG Talent. Like, mm -hmm. that worked for him last time around, and yet here, it's like, well, on Hecarim, he just kind of does nothing. On Udyr, he just kind of does nothing, right? On the Lee Sin, he just kind of does nothing. Which, like, those are things that worked for him before. You say that, but I will also say that when I watch River play Hecarim, I think he's generally playing it correct. He's gotten pretty good, efficient CS advantages on that pick, but then it hasn't translated into anything. I think where, if you're going to be pointing fingers for Dignitas, I really want to see the relationship between River and Fake God, because this okay. week, Fake God has had a really rough time. He got solo killed twice as Jace against Summit's Gnar, and then he also got solo killed yesterday as Gnar against Whippo's Camille, and then died three more times to Trundle Gank. So he was 0-4-0 at yeah. certain points in that game. Someday has also been a player who I feel like has had a resurgence this year because I, I kind of feel like for Dignitas to keep the ship afloat, they need to give River time to run the map. And they just have not been granting him that time when he's not on Jarvan. Well, maybe Poppy, but no, it is going to be back on Hecarim. As you mentioned, you liked what he did with the champ. Well, one yep. game played, sadly, was a loss. But yeah, he is a farm-focused champion. Get the six, go gain Kalein. Hope nothing's on fire before that point. And then, you know, have more stats, right? You just kind of take the scraps from sort of half a mythic onwards, and you tend to look pretty good. Q max is all that really matters. So you really do spike very early. Mm. You know, at nine is kind of like maximum Hecarim power, it feels like. Up against Sin Zhao, they covered, they hovered a couple different options, but <clears throat> gonna go for early gank pressure here. Certainly team fight's okay, you have the immunity, uh, so you actually hold on, uh, you know, reasonably well as a frontliner, but these certainly have team fight starting. FB has a failure, of course, very, very good. Pretty center comp. Yeah, I do think it is a little tricky running Nautilus into Tom Kench. If you uh, try and fight past Tom Kench, it does get very difficult, but it will also give Hunter Thieves more reliable initiation in the mid and late game. It's been a very strange split. Maybe actually strange year for 100 Thieves because I feel like they have been very good, but they've had these really underwhelming feeling losses, right? Mm -hmm. Speaking of, the 2-0 against Dignitas in lock-in. Yeah. Very disappointing when the majority of people thought 100 Thieves was going to be winning lock-in. Yeah. And then also, like personally coming into this week, I looked at them as a five and one team, or a four and two team, and their two losses were really close games where they just lost a team fight down the stretch. Uh, but they had their first kind of big loss against Cloud9 where Cloud9 ran the map on them. And now they're sitting at five and three, wondering like, hey, they need to defend this LCS championship by putting out statement games. And there's just not that much hype around this team because I think they've had these close losses and yeah. have not proven that they are good when the opportunity presents itself. I agree with you. I mean, that was my read as well, right? 100 Thieves, like, okay, they're defaulting into a top two team, right? Like, they're, yeah. they're the ones spending the title, the same roster, like, they should look really good. So, you know, can a team rise to the level? Of course, but it seems like a couple of teams have actually passed them, right? They're, uh, I believe, alone in third here, being five and three. Yep. Uh, two teams, seven and two above them, Team Liquid and Cloud9, yep. and those, you know, resoundingly look like better teams. The question is, does anyone else also keep up? And that certainly is a maybe. Corky gonna be locked in for Abadaga, so pretty standard. Uh, of course, magic damage yeah. to the Corky, but double marks from the back line. Plenty of front line here. They're gonna leave someday with the counter pick, yep. and we'll see what the spicy top of the matchup is because he's been getting the better of Fake God, uh, you know, looking at the season's games. Very standard draft coming through so far. The Graves, another standard pick. Uh, will it then get matched the same way we've been seeing Graves get matched? Do we see another someday Aurelia? Do we see a someday Camille? Not sure. Yep. But nothing nothing crazy happening in this draft. A lot of this game is going to be coming down to execution in-game. Both players three and one on their respective mid laners here, which to be fair for Dignitas is a, is a big upgrade since uh, the overall card hasn't been quite as solid. Ooh, are we gonna get a Jace, Jace in the Jace. top lane? All right. Now we saw Summit completely slaughter this lane up yeah. against Kumo earlier today. Uh, someday versus Fake God. I want to see if he can get remotely similar interaction here because he got counterpicked. And it's what Hunter Thieves wanted to do this entire draft phase. I don't think there was any world where they weren't going to try and give Someday a counterpick against Fake God based off of the way Fake God has been struggling so far this week. So I think things go to plan for them. And I'm interested to see if Hunter Thieves actually plays towards Someday or if they try and let him 
kind of isolate his way to an advantage. The difficult thing with Jace here is Hecarim is actually very good against Jace in terms of ganking him. So if they want someday to play aggressive, I think Closer is going to have to hover up top a lot. Well, last time you played Jace, Deathless, 4-0-7, the fastest win of the spring split, 400 Thieves so far. 26-48 against Golden Guardians, we know to also be actually a pretty solid team. So, True. had his way with Licorice in that game, and try to have his way with Fake God here as well. We'll see how long he can remain Deathless. It would be nice for Dignitas to turn around the slump. He had a 3-1 and one start, and you look back yeah. at the games, and it's like, oh, well, you beat TSM, you beat CLG, Immortals hadn't gotten together yet then, you're like, so was, that just, wins. was that just lucky, right? Was that just you hit the right teams at the right time and, and it's all downhill from here? Or can you turn it back around? Heard from Biofrost said, yeah, if you get a 0-3 a week, Pagus isn't good the week after. Like, you're so down about the results. So would love to see the Gantas bounce back, you know, doubt the haters, get back in there. Against 100 Thieves, it would be a statement victory like it was at the end of lock-in. Here we go on to the Rift. Dignitas 3 and 5. 100 Thieves 5 and 3. Do they fall to a giant tie for third through sixth, or do they rise and keep one game behind first? Let's see as we get onto the rift here. River, in his namesake, doesn't spot anyone just yet. Okay, should see who he. Oh, just in case. I mean, if he gets hooked there, it might just be a death, so I understand it. And Ghost Cooldown is like three minutes and change. It's pretty quick, yeah. So it's almost always going to be back up by the time it matters anyway. We'll track it and see if there is like a yeah. small play there, but... It's very, like, low damage EV. I don't even know if 100 Thieves spotted the ghost. I don't think so. If they did, it might cause a, a tweak in the jungle pathing. So what I would see, if if 100 Thieves noticed the ghost was gone, look at, look at the ward that they were able to place uh, on the blue buff right here. And if they... I want to make the minimap bigger. So basically... Hecarim wants to full clear most of the time, right? So he's going to kill these three camps, and then he's going to roll up towards here. Zinn is clearing these three camps. If he knows he doesn't have Ghost, Zinn can run down and catch Hecarim at those wolves. If he knows he's Ghostless, that's a fight where Jace can get shoved, come down, and they can actually kill the Hecarim here. That, that would be like, if they yeah. saw it, that could be a plan they try to do. It's like the exact play we saw out of the Viego in the, yeah. in the previous game, right? Yeah. Hecarim is, he wants to start here because he wants AOE camps, right? His, his best time is, is, well, I've got Q, so let me kill Raptors, let me kill Krugs, things like that. Um, but that takes longer, right? Krugs is a very, very slow camp to kill by design, which gives you time to three camp and then cross map and then meet, you know, deep in the opposing side. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if Closer managed to show up for that one. We've got a bot lane scrap right now. Not too bad on either side. Yeah, it actually... It actually all kind of lines up for 100 Thieves with the way they want to play this game. If they if they three camp, dual lane invade, you can see they also just pinged the blue buff right now saying Hecarim did not start here. Let's look to do something. Abadage also getting push in mid lane. So it's going to be very hard for River to get a full clear if 100 Thieves plays this aggressively. And blue looks like he's out of potions entirely. Chugs through all that one. Abadaga, I believe, will end up being slightly ahead in health overall when they meet next. River finally done now with his third camp. And you can see, yeah, if Sinjao wanted to meet at Wolves, he could do so. You can see he's already, you know, finished Raptors and onto red instead, or sorry, skip yeah. Raptors onto red instead. I will say that top lane state looks like Graves has shoved, so they can't actually get a good collapse in, and they're just going to handshake. I, I would have liked to see Closer go for something there, but they, they opt not to. Alrighty, end of the day, not going to be much. We just get the camps to go down, and I mean, and Hecarim is honestly happy to say, hey, if we just both totally full clear, and again, information should be had that Sinjao's topside, this should be pretty knowable. Uh, we'll see if anything happens to him, because River is low on mana. He can smite if he needs to, and that'll give him a big surge of health and mana to be, like, pretty much unfightable. Ghost is indeed down, and now they know for sure, right? He didn't get spotted. Yeah. Uh, maybe the Gromp did, but they know for sure Close is here. He's on a ward now as well. Close is actually down a camp now. Yeah. River is still Ghostless, though, so it, 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 it matters. This? He's going to bring Fake God down, but Someday's here. Do they even have mid-priority to take in this fight? Is it going to be enough? Someday lands a Shock Blast. Fake God can't get it to happen. First blood picked up. What was that fight? Ah, that's not what they drew up. Flash the Shock Blast or something, man. Why even go for this? It really feels like uh, communication clogged decision making to me. Uh, there's this fight down at River. Over Crab, I think Fake God is probably thinking about how he can get to the fight with Closer. Someday just jumps him, and it, it turns into a huge disaster. Now, it's River is getting pushed off blue. He doesn't even have Smite. Yep. Closer doesn't know that, though. Uh, Fake God's okay, back. Yeah. 
All right. Actually, you can, because you can look at the scoreboard and know he's on three charges of smite. You can always okay, know that, man. Okay, okay. Like, any jungler, just press tab, like, oh, he's no smite. Closer could have gone for that. The only problem is, does mid and top collapse? Fake God now in That's danger. Does have flash. Flash follow into the slow. Shock blast. But the red buff's not enough. No. Time warp tonic They're potion. Together. They're going to get revenge. He's not even in this game. But River is back on it with double buffs. Oh, the turntables. <laughs> he gets what he wants at the end of the day. I got to say, when all is said and done, what? River's got advantage. His ghost came back. <laughs> he yeah. was able to use it. <sighs> this game is so, so now, weird. So now, weirdly enough, in the river fight, sorry, sorry in the scuttle crab fight, yeah. uh, River did have a camp advantage because of the way Closer had moved. And now, blue! Yes. Abadon! This game makes no sense! What are you doing? It's a comedy of errors. Abadon just says, it's a victor! Guess I'm dead! Thanks for the gold! What is going on? I don't know, man. All right, this, one, this one's a real fight, though. This one, FBI is playing it correctly. Good shield by Biofrost. Mechanically, pretty solid down there. What happened to Corky? He, he... I haven't seen a solo death like that this year. Yeah. Like, obviously, he lost some trades, but, like, that was a Victor walk and press. Both flashes just there. I am very Dude, perplexed by that Abadaga death. I don't know. So... First Elan's here. I mean, it's a big wave, so Abadage doesn't want to give it up. But he just chunks him a little bit. Yeah, he's got to leave. Yeah. So, yeah, you're out. And, you know, didn't have TP. Wanted to play for the wave. This is actually really good chompers. Can't quite get him into them, but still some good damage. Who he, uh, you know, mana list does have flash. And FBI, you can't always go That's through an Aphelios. Thing. So yeah. able to stay alive. Who he, though, very, very low. Yeah, really just trying to give them push out in this wave. Someday still having control of this top lane, but we have a we have a very wild start. And Blue in particular, I think, would be set up to possibly carry this game. Can push him out again. Knows the TP is down, right? So he has... There's a biscuit on Abadage, but I, I actually feel like he's going to be able to pressure that lane pretty well. Good side step. It's like a tail of two lanes. Mid lane is going heavily for Dig. Top lane is still going heavily for 100 Thieves. You see the CS will come close to equal. The very thankful thing is Vamp Tester plus um, the the Hoth Armor here is like a godsend here for Fake God, but he misses, I think, every melee there, gets a couple of casts, there's still four CS down, and of course, infinite pressure for somebody who's already on his tier stack, so gonna feel good off that first blood, right? I mean, this is this is the dream power spike. First yeah. time for, for Jace is Serrated Dirk, which is extremely efficient, plus the tiers you're stacking for, for later on as well. You love seeing that, and he's just happy to lane this for a while. This is big for Dig. They have a Good huge flash. advantage in mid. Yeah, afraid of getting you know pushed around. Here we go. Someday wants to dive. Level six on. Lands a bunch of it. Be careful. Trades it, but that's gonna be worth it. The wave will be denied under the tower. I actually think that that's arguably better for Fake God based on the state of the game, right? He loses maybe three CS. The wave crashes again at mid. He actually gets enough gold that he can build up a little bit of, of armor and not be bullied hard by Jace, uh, and then walk back. So this is. We talked earlier in the day about 100 Thieves wanting to kind of assert themselves as a top team. Yep. Really not the start. No. But it's also, I will say, like game 15 of 15 in Super Week. It is the third game of the weekend. Things are honestly feeling really off to me yeah. in this game. I I've seen a lot of stuff. There is the Abadaga death. I mean, I want to watch this fight one more time. So someday lands EQ. They got to get six. Yeah. He's out of mana, so he But he's can't out play. of mana, yeah, exactly. And then we... Okay. Oh, he's dead. He's, he's yeah. got flash. Oh, okay, good flash. But I think, can he chase us? I mean, he's got <laughs> chases, right? <laughs> yep. Good job, good job, good job. Well done. Mid lane is a kingdom right now. Blue is slaughtering Abadaga, gets a little help from River. Well done. And I'm yeah. glad to see River kind of like back on. The, the first kind of one felt weird, but I mean, every single gig since then has looked really, really good. Shows up top lane, but he's got his, flat, uh, his ghost back up. Shows the mid lane, it's the same thing here. Now, Biofrost in danger. When's the shields come up? And he's gonna be able oh, to. Can he, he might be able to kill him. I think it's enough for damage. It is. Woo! FBI, beautiful timing, well played around the shield. Thank you for the kill, my friend. Yeah, that was really sweet by FBI. Everything about that, as you mentioned, he lands the ultimate, and that gives you a window of time when you can follow up the long-range auto. So he waits for Biofrost shield to wear out ends up getting the execution, and even though there's been a big mid gap this game, because they roamed up, 
early, they might actually get the Rift Herald. This is how they get their game back on track. They get the Rift Herald, then they can play through someday and help him accelerate plates. Because with the way it was going in mid, things were actually looking pretty grim. Well, Herald goes down. You can see the gold difference, only 280. So a single Herald charge, that's gonna earn you the gold back. 100 Thieves, if you play out the scoreboard, are actually up in gold based on what you're gonna see happen over time. Abadaga should be reasonably able to clear this one away. I don't think he's under that much threat. Bonafrost can't take the tower first, which with Huhi coming in, maybe even could have tried to bait it. But reports are on the way. This is about to be a pretty spicy fight, two versus four, and they don't have the power oh, Neo. yet. Neo burns ah. down, goes in too early. Turns out you still have to dodge bullets, Neo. You're in the first act of the movie. Big play by Huhi to get the aggression on Neo. In a 4v2, getting a one for zero as the two and burning two summoner spells, big. Now they're just gonna try a 2v2. You know what? This one Knock might up. work. Knockback, Huhi. This one, this nice work. anchor, good slow, has to force the ulti. This will guarantee the kill. I know they wanted to hold the cooldowns, but they don't get to. Forces the cooldown out best as you could have had it. Huhi, but a good kill into the Dignitas duo. Blue buff, steel cross map, closer wants more. He's a Gromp as well. So we still have an action-packed game. We are going back and forth. Certainly, it's been a bit messy, Jack, but yep. it has been exciting. So this is the last game of Super Week. Yep. Uh, Kobe had that superhero costume. Yeah. And this is a game to seeing which heroes can carry. Ah. It, that's really the way it's shaping up, because if we look at gold, the heroes on Dig are River and Blue. Can yeah. Hecarim and Victor carry? Or, as you see, Someday sitting at two and one, and then the one and zero Aphelios. It's Jace Aphelios versus Victor Hecarim. The other supporting cast are still important in terms of their ability to set things up, but that's who is going to get played through this game. And you know, that's it's interesting because essentially you've got a lot of poke, right? You know, about half the time FBI is going to have really solid poke there. Obviously, Corky going to be you know part of that comp as well when he can get his items online. But um, you know, Victor and and Hecarim. Like, they're kind of divers. Like, Victor can follow up the Hecarim stuff, because if you fear him forward, you're in range of the entire combo, yeah. you're one-shotting somebody. So, you know, the tools that can stop the poke are the ones with gold, so then, you know, that's your push and pull, right? Because yeah. also someday can just keep the map split up and, and not play for the Hecarim team fights. I think a lot of times, Victor, you would actually classify as this, like, long-range mage, but as you mentioned, in the Corky matchup, he actually has the range disadvantage, so yeah. then he's, he's the, the one who has to go in. Yeah. In that one, yeah. So, I mean... Turbo Chem Tank completed by River. Ghost up, ulti up soon. Uh, he's got a couple more camps to clear, and then then I think he's back on the map looking for people who are flashless. Currently, that's Abadage, and for about five more seconds someday. So I think they're just going to keep trying to hunt Corky. Chem Tank, Ghost, ult soon. Yep. And of course, yeah, cooldown boots feel good. Means you get shorter cooldowns on the summoner spells. Feels pretty good as well. Um, no no rune set up for item haste. So, you know, has the, the full cooldown on Turbo Chem Tank. Not that there's anything wrong with his build, just kind of noting out that, you know, it's not a uh, domination secondary for the ingenious hunter. His zap's not going to land, but okay. Biofrost deals some damage to FBI, who doesn't have innate sustain, so indeed takes that damage for real on the chin, who he can rid of some of the wards. They know it's a 2v3, but ultimately no dive. Yeah, there was not enough burst damage that they could do, even though they had the item advantage on the AD carry. So full Gale Force completion versus Neo, who was still trying to finish up his call. Also, Victor and Hecarim had just pushed out mid lane, so they could move into River and at least threaten a collapse, which which pulled them off. If River can get this kill on a someday, it would be huge. I think he's got a chance. Another plate in mid, though, oh. you can see. 15. Control no. ward troll. 25 CS lead in mid, plus two plates. Looks pretty good. Nice knock up. He shouldn't be able to pull aggro, but maybe almost finds the kill. Ooh. They could have had that. It was close, but I think he has it anyway. Someone heals in. Flash is available, but slowed up, stunned up. Bio Frost solo kills FBI through two summoners. Tom catch, baby. I also Woo! think FBI could have used the flash a little bit earlier. Uh, a lot of mistakes coming in from 100 Thieves this game, but Dignitas is scrapping, trying to end that loss streak. And that's that's really what they what they needed here, but closer's down here anyway. Just in time. Oh, they double sweep as well. Man, 100 Thieves is so out of sorts. Yeah. Like, how many 100 Thieves games we've seen Abadage with one really perplexing death? Um, second, he just got out lane once he was behind. I don't blame him as much for the second one. But then, I've just not seen FBI die like that. Right? Yeah. Just not respecting this full vision, right? Tom Kench W. 
Gale Force it? Nope. He stops to auto the yeah. turret again. No flash, no heal, no Gale Force. Right? He ends up using the heal now, but he could have, for instance, flashed up early, gotten out of range. What is that flash Then he flashes even? late as the auto. It's just, it's weird. That's what I'm going to say. I've not yeah. seen FBI play like that in a while. I mean, this entire game feels like this, yeah. right? Like, I've seen probably seven uncurted mistakes across both teams so far in this game. We got another fight now in the bottom river, targeting him, but this is blue, just chunk rocket, nearly lands a flash follow. Closer should have it. Woo! Oh, he does, he takes him down. Gotta get away from the chaos storm, but finds that kill, the jinx. You gotta be kidding, Someone but at least it. Graves lands it. Well done, fake god, trades it back one for one. Still got him, uh, yep. but this means someday it gets to free push in the top lane because Fake God was mid for that numbers advantage fight. So I think first turret of the game is likely going to go over to 100 Thieves. And the one for one should be in favor of 100 when all the gold is tallied up at the end. 240 right, right now though. Dive. Yep, looking at Summoner lists of Felios, but he clears away really quick. And with no wave, they don't go for the play. So um, Biofrost, his ult actually might still be down because he used it for the offensive play a little bit ago. So I think that would have made it maybe a bit safer. Hecarim just goes in, takes the damage, who cares? We eat him out anyway, and you know we're going to be safe. But yeah, not the play here. So blue buff steal again. Someday this time around, it was closer before. Knocks that one down. Great, thank you. 33 CS lead in the top lane. And for now, mostly content to play it in his lane. Mostly content yeah. to fully fake God. Has yet to kill the tower. But we'll see him eventually. Who he good job on the anchor. Has to flash and we're gonna decide not to go for the ulti. Yeah, the Drake is up right now, so it looks like second Drake of the game is coming through for Dignitas. I think it's totally fine actually for Hunter Thieves not to contest this one. Uh, because they are playing the outrange game when we're thinking of the big picture. James Rocker comes down to scout, maybe try to steal the Rift Herald. But they'll have a very fed Jace. When he gets the mana immune transform, and when Corky gets the mana immune transform and Ludens. They're going to be a force in terms of objective setup. And the engage for Dignitas is not going to be very strong. Package guarantees the slow. Blue is already flashless. He's got absolutely no way out. Well done. Set up by Abadaga. And finally gets one back for all the pain and suffering from the laning phase. Huge when they also have the Rift Herald. So they're going to be able to give over at least one turret of solo go for FBI. They might consider going for a second and actually just jump out to a big goalie. I think it should be. I think it's possible here. Uh, we can tell who's coming around. It's just Tom Kench and Ekram. That feels uh, playable, but away. you can see the posturing, yeah. It is still going to be a crash thing every single time. I believe you cannot one- Oh, he can! Just enough from the eye! 1387, just enough damage. Clutch. Well played, Bio. Auto attack. That, I mean, that is really clutch, right? I mean, the timing is tight, right? If it it's is. too early, you're between autos. If it's too late, it's sometimes just out of range or already hit, hit the crash. So, yeah. uh, well done, Bio. I mean, he solo killed FBI. He denies the turret damage. Overall, I mean, great game from Biofrost. He is playing very well, and River is also having a good game, but yeah. it's it's still not looking that good for Dig. Uh, I hate no. to say it, like, they, they have spent a lot of time looking for plays on the bot lane specifically that have netted them nothing. And I think even though they did get the kill on Abadage and they got the solo kill on the FBI. Those are normally moves that can kind of break the game open for you. I think they haven't been able to convert the play after that. And now it's looking like Hunter Thieves has the chance to just bring the game back and make it a little more stable. At least Jinx is a CS lead, but you can see the itemization is pretty close to the 80 carries. So yeah, it does feel like Hunter Thieves have a lot of what they want here. 1,500, the gold lead two dragons either way. If Dignitas can find fights at the right times or just fight that little bit better, you know, they can be on that way to Infernal Soul, and, you know, that makes up for all the gold deficits in the world, pretty much. Down goes the wave. Someday has knocked down that turret, of course. Part of that lead they've got. Just trading farm, though, with a 33 CS difference. We're waiting to see what he can do aggressively on the map a bit later. Which is going to be Neo collecting a wave and Hunter Thieves can move down toward the bottom side. Dragon's still a ways out. These wards will all time out before you actually play for that objective, but as we'll take control in the meantime, Biofrost Going just senses in. it. Triple knockup, rocket to land. FBI is low and Huge. gets shut down. Biofrost can do no wrong. Three kills to be claimed. Whatever you're paying him, it's not enough. Fish senses or something to blind W into that bush. As the TP comes down, there's so much confidence in that play. That's the type of move 
to get back in this game. That is just incredible. I mean, really, really beautiful stuff. Raver's been doing awesome. Blue out his lane kingdom, and now Biofrost sets up the next one. Gold lead completely demolished. Someday can't even go in. Doesn't go for the play into Neo. 100 Thieves gold lead isn't doing work. Dignitas is zero kill. Well, one kill support is doing everything. That is the funny thing about this game. So let's watch this one more time. Not so okay, they, they do did, see him. They see them go in. They never see them come out. They can surmise that they're going to be in that bush. Obviously, 100 Thieves has control word in this, so they think they're being sneaky. They are not. The early kill comes down onto the biggest threat, which just gives the green light for everyone on Dig to run in. And they pull out another huge play. Three kills, four now. Double Ghost River. I think, sadly, not a lot of this gold is going on a Jinx. Keep in mind, yeah. an assist split three or four ways. So you're getting, you know, like 60, 70 gold on those two assists each. It's not a lot. He did get one of the kills. But, you know, imagine you get the triple kill on Jinx, and she's like, oh, yeah, here's a BF sword, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that acceleration does matter. It's actually part of the reason I still defend Collector, even if, like, the mathematical 1v1, Collector is indeed worse in a lot of cases. Like, no doubt to that one. But yeah. guaranteeing Jinx gets the two other kills? Like, that's worth more than the stats on the item in a lot of the case, because now you get to item three, right? And yeah. that is part of the calculation that that does matter. I am I am a collector apologist, and I'm going to, you know, <laughs> just keep doing that because the item is actually good. Yeah, and you're also an RFC hater. So I am an RFC hater. This is like your nightmare right now. For, but even if not. Build. Yeah. Uh, he's got the, I will get in range for the last hit build. Yeah, which is fine. And, and especially if your team is bursty, which like, hey, it's Hecarim Victor, mm -hmm. getting one out of it all, means you got excited. Yeah. And like in, in cases where you've got a burst comp, I like RFC because it, it performs a function you couldn't have done otherwise. But if you're primary DPS, I think, I think you're not allowed to throw that away. But in this case, he's not primary DPS. Yeah. I think the build can fit. We really got to pay attention yes. to the setup though, because we got big poke coming through from the Jace and the Corky, but Dig has position. The question is, how well can they step up to 100 Thieves when 100 Thieves tries to enter River? They've cleared all their vision without getting poke, which is a really good sign. But I don't think 100 Thieves wants to give themselves soul point. We're going to try and enter. 140 gold lead, two item Jinx. Dragon coming alive right now. Ward control belongs to Dignitas. Fake God gonna playing burn. the flank. They and yeah, 100 Thieves is going to go for mid tier two as a trade. Soul point given. Baron seems very unlikely. In fact, they are pathing through the ward, so they know even mid lane is not the attack. I really feel like you probably could have like sold and gone for mid tier two and take the positioning lead, put your wards down in, in the brush leading up the lane because who's going to stop you? They're all four in river, but. How did these kill a mid lane wave and just give it up? Yeah, there is a little fear though. Like if they push up, uh, maybe Hecarim can sneak in behind them. And if they lose a team fight at 21 minutes, that's Baron, and now they're really in trouble. So I understand the caution uh, if they think they're going to have better setup on the next Drake, but it does really put them on a clock now. Yeah. Not getting the gold from the interior turret and also not getting the Drake. I just wonder, you know, at what point are you going to play the game if you're unwilling to? Like, you have the wave, you have first dibs on wards, you can poke them on the way in, and you're unwilling to fight on your terms. Just, yeah. It feels weird to me that, like, okay, then when are you battling? Because you've given away more stats by dropping an Infernal Dragon. It doesn't get better from your, I don't think. If they think they have the scaling, okay. I'm not sure I agree, but, like, if that's yeah. the view, then, yeah, okay, in five minutes, it's better than it was last time. If that's your view, then, okay, sure, I, I understand the logic. I'm just... I don't know. My, I am, I am nervous for Hunter Thieves' decision making. Absolutely. I think Abadage wants Ludens. I think that's a really big spike for them. They definitely don't have huge items on FBI. I don't think he's going to get to Infinity Edge by the time of the Soul fight either. That's a pretty early Ooh. Soul for Dig. Uh, it's, it's a close one. This is a very close game. And as the wave is cleared on the top side, that is Victor trying to push it in. Now careful because Flo's on Abadaga. Checks in a brush. Okay, no one's waiting there. No Hecarim, no Tom Kench waiting for me, and just means Corky can walk up and claim that farm. Right? Needs to get himself all the way to Ludens. Shouldn't be far away. It's under a thousand gold from those components to have finished Ludens, I believe. And uh, you know, pretty much standard laning average is 400 gold per minute. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you ever are curious, by the way, if you want to like do a, a mental heuristic when watching games or even playing your own, yeah. Between dragons, expect to earn about 2,000 gold. That's like roughly like a solid average. If you're catching more waves than normal, it's higher than that, obviously. If you're Getting really set behind, right? If you're if just like you're getting mauled and you get scraps, obviously it's lower, but like a baseline, hey, by the way, 400 gold per minute, 2,000 gold between dragons. That, that's just expectation. Cool. For the three carries, basically. So that means FBI will not have Infinity Edge. He's got two and a half minutes and he's only sitting on 800 gold. Unless they funnel him. Yeah, which I don't think is going to happen. But I, I wonder, I really don't know what's happening next in this game. I'm going to be completely honest with you. River is, is like looking for a fight, but they're just really not on the same page. 
Yep, burn everything to knock the wave down. A couple autos still get to come through. That's a decent snipe. That'll keep a big god down below half HP, but the team is unwilling to... Like, they see Victor on top wave. They've got everyone there, and they're like, half HP turret's good enough for us. It was dirt for it. Hunter Thieves refuse to do anything except clear waves and, and lose more of the map. Someday, who got gigantically ahead is now running away from the bot side. Gonna even get the wave into the turret. His team had mid control, and he walks away from bot lane tier one. And Hunter Thieves just keep doing nothing. Doesn't seem like they have responded well to their defeat yesterday against Cloud9, but uh, a lot hinges on the last 10, 15 minutes of this game. Uh, if they end up winning this, walk away at two and one, fix those things in the break. But if they lose this one to Dignitas, move to five and four, yep. it's gonna be very different conversations for Hunter Thieves in between these weeks. And we got about a minute and a half, which is already when Dingertoss is starting to jockey for position here in the mid lane. That's Pretty a good, good damage. Yeah, nice knockup. Well, just gonna land good damage here, but it's a minute 20 for Dragon. So recalls can pretty much always come in time. FBI Zolti is gonna be a really tight cooldown between now and that Dragon spawn. It'll be yep. close. I think it'll be a little bit later, but not by yep. a lot. 15 seconds late, but that's generally okay unless Dignitas is starting it on spawn. They really, both teams really want mid control right now. Yep, important to walk away from that hook. Doesn't land it here. Good shock flash. Thankfully, blew out of shields and as bad as it could have been. But yeah, Biofrost still really, really needs that recall. We'll finally do it somewhere a bit safer in the back. And we're going to see everyone hit that one as well. Again, the, the alarm should go off. If you could find a way to make your computer play a loud sound that says recall, recall, recall when you see a one minute timer, that's what you got to do. Get yourself yep. there. BFs were picked up. Control is an inventory. Ludens. Tempest is done, Jat. You called it out. An important spike. Abadaga has it. He's got package as well. Yeah. This is the strongest they're going to be. Two and a half item Corky. Victor pit stops for Azonias. He is not full damage. He won't be as bursty as a different build could have been. It's a defensive option. So can you push through that? Hunter Thieves hoping this is the power spike they need to fight for Dragon number four. Hook That's on a Biofrost. That's a good start. Early stopwatch. Fake God could be around. Is this the fight? Burns the flash. River can get in. They step in well. I mean, getting getting that flash onto Biofrost and then getting first move into River, that's that's what they want. They can now poke with Corky and even poke with Jace through mid lane if Dig tries to step up. It's yep. very difficult for Dig to get in here. Corky is so safe with package. You are unstoppable during that cast, so you will immune a Naga from Biofrost. You will immune uh, anything. You'll Hecarim Fear, Hecarim E, all that will get wiped Blue away. Blue is zoned out. Blue and, is zoned off ooh, in mid. Wow. So Hunter Thieves wants to start this quick. Here we go. 7k health on the Dragon. Package to zone them, and now it's time but to But they're burn. not even hitting it. You've got five seconds, and... They they needed to be hitting it before that package goes off. They've lost their advantage. Blue has moved around. Now it's straight up eye contact. Now it's about how much poke they can land. Abadaga only on has... He only has two missiles left, and River's got flank. Okay, well, there's the jump back from Abadaga. They'll take the fight instead. They're going to be... Benedict's in damage. They're going to dive in. They're going to find that first kill, but how about the rest? Balafrost runs back, stays alive. They wait out, closes Ulti. They're going to find the knockup. Kill number one, kill number two. You got a dragon, but look out for blue because it's kill number three. And we're going to keep going. Someday an FBI on the run. Hunter Thieves get nothing done but a single dragon. But it's time for the rest of the map because what's better than a dragon is a Baron. What is a thief to Dignitas is they will take even more of the map. Dignitas did eventually get the wraparound. Abadage basically got soloed out by River. And as you say, this very well should be Baron. Well done. The fact that Blue got around, they waited patiently, and they knew what the outs were, right? Yeah. Do not fight until he's here. Do not fight until he's here. And you know what? Screw it. Let him take Dragon. I like the play to say screw it. Let him yeah. get Dragon. Their Dragon means nothing. We take the fight. That's better. Three kills is the map for us. So I love the play from Dignitas, but this is so slow from 100 Thieves. Exactly. Two things. Dignitas doesn't want to get out poked, and then they also want to be able to get flank because if they try and go straight ahead, they're probably going to lose the fight. That's why River has that minion cover to be able to get into the brush, and they don't actually see him until after the Valkyrie is used. So, oh, surprise, there's a Hecarim right behind the team, and it's the moment who he goes in as well. So as a team, that's going to create a lot of confusion. They're going forward while their main damage source gets picked off. It means they're completely surrounded, and at that point, they just have to turn tail and run. It was all played by River. After he got that pick, he kept identifying, okay, what's the fight look like? What's going on? Okay, they're stuck on the Sin Zhao. They're not going to turn back, so I will stay out of range. I'm not going to make sure, you know, like, doesn't dive in. Hecarim played the back half of that fight really, really well. Good job to him. Found the, I wouldn't say solo kill. It was good by Fake God to get him to half in the first place. You know, well done to the both of them. But yeah, just that Corky was entirely useless. It has not been a good day for Abadak. No. Let us say that. But 
it's still salvageable. 2,000 gold. They got another two minutes of this Baron power play to try and stop the bleeding. And then it's running it back for another dragon fight. It's about how much map control can Dig take with this Baron to make the next dragon uncontestable is what Dignitas' goal is. They're not trying to win the game off this Baron. They're just trying to get that outer turret. They want to crack this mid turret. If they're really fortunate, they'll go for the inner mid turret as well, but that's actually not necessary. I think right now is actually an okay Baron, um, but they can go for more. 2,700 gold, looks like. He's gonna crest gonna the 3k, they will grab it. Arm of Thieves still busy clearing the bot lane wave. Just now, Corky finished that one off. You could see the residue from his bomb a second ago. Red Bull Baron power play, 3,200 gold. I want to see when they hit the recall. Usually I like to do it at the very tail end. You know, you, you get as much done with the buff and then spend your, you know, extra 2K that you got from all your towers and, and then, you know, show up on the map for the rest of the play. Uh, there's going to be a one minute desync between the end of this Baron buff and Dragon. So that'll time up well, right? Get the maximum, get your race pushed in, take your quick recall, spend, and then you're just ready to position with, with a bigger lead than last time. Yeah, and the disadvantage that Fake God had to some days Jace earlier on in the game, while there is still a 50 CS difference it's only 1.5k so the graves can still have impact the game is much more about neo's jinx at this point he's got a 2200 gold lead on fbi's affilios most Ooh. importantly that's a that's another pick they want it yep are they gonna go I think gonna yes, get him. no way out goodbye i'm gonna falls yet again tp to join in fake god flashes get behind to do the same ulti for better damage this is going to be the base in shambles we have seen someday kill minion waves time and again and congratulations you have 314 cs it's the visage of Froggen back in my mind he gets minions and nothing else and the lead has just gone away and away and away and hundred thieves just watch themselves die dignitas looking for their fourth win of the split and fake god steps up gets slowed has to be careful spit back out and Hunter Thieves, once again, recall to watch their base die in front of their eyes. Yeah, that was the last of the Baron as well, so it's going to be about a reset for this Infernal Soul, and the nightmare game for Abadage just continues. The solo kill at the start, uh, getting picked out now twice by just kind of meandering through the jungle. So Dignitas will actually not have a huge summoner spell advantage for this upcoming dragon, but they very well do have the position. It's going to be very, very difficult for 100 Thieves to stop this one. Cool to see tanks carry. Cool to see how much yeah. River and Biofrost have done. I don't want to sell Blue short. I think everyone else has pitched in a bit as well, to be clear, but it has just been the team fight engaged. It has just been those two time and again, making so much happen. 7-0-2 oh, and 1-1-7. And one, one, and I mean, this is just immaculate from those two players doing everything for the team. They should burn this. Aphelios is really so late to the fight. There's but no way you package and kill yourself. They gotta worry about the package. Yeah, it's, it's gone. Yeah, this has gotta be there. It's gotta be there. There's Dragon Soul. Hunt of Thieves, will you choose to fight? They go in after Soul Who he might just die. There's the fear, the jump into the back line. No kills as yet, there's one. Here comes two. And Amadaga refuses to use his skills. Finally goes in for Neo, but a stopwatch is well timed. Immunes the entire burn, and Amadaga's on the run. Sidesteps the zap, Luger gets spots him. Sunday finally goes in for a play. Finally gets his third kill. His fourth, it's a double in this fight, but can't get much more. Two dead for Dignitas, three dead for 100 Thieves, but a Dragon Soul means a push towards the base. Dragon Soul, no Baron, but super minions. We have Abadage and Closer trying to stop this. I don't know if Dig can actually go for the win, but they can probably get multiple in hips. I think bot lane's got to be a formality here. Yeah. You outnumber them, and you have a soul. This has got to be yours every single time. River is a little bit low, but as long as they sidestep the rocket, he's hitting the minion wave to try to thin that out. So they can't go for the Nexus, but he's not getting any champion damage done. Dignitas will play it back. You know the respawns are coming. You can never go for Nexus. The failure's up in five seconds. But again, Dignitas get more and more and more. 7,000 gold lead. Dragon Soul. This has got to be theirs. Man, what is it about this game? Dignitas is like kind of dominating, right? They're nine kills up. They're 7,000 gold up. They have Infernal Soul. But it still feels really hard. Like, a thing could go wrong almost at any moment. Like, Neo no longer has stopwatch. If he gets picked out, maybe Blue cut, gets cut out of position. I can still see it turning, but this fight, very far in their favor. After the Infernal Soul goes down, I don't understand this engage from Huhi. They're straight up 5v5, no poke beforehand, and in a choke point if the damage wants to follow up. They get obliterated for trying to follow up on that hook. 
Then they just kind of fly in after the fact, and we got another fight in mid. He's got flank. There's the dive. There's a fear, a knockback, and a someday. A flashless Jace will die. And it's time for the 5v4 to keep it going. Hook forward, but Empty's going to buy a lot of time, though. Health bars go right back up. FBI nice zoned out by Blue, and it's time to start knocking down everybody. Close is going to be next up, and it's just the rest of it all going to drop. A nice chomp. Let him get the kill. Honestly, Bio deserves another one. It's going to be Fake God going unstoppable instead. A huge performance at the Dignitas Jungle. A huge performance at the Dignitas support. This has got to be the Nexus. FBI is alone against the world. Gets a little bit of damage done, but you have to believe the Super Minion Wave is going to be enough. He will attempt the heroics, but be careful because they're going to be shot to pieces. And Ace comes through, and Dignitas once again takes down the reigning LCS champions. Four and five to end Super Week with nine games to go. Dignitas tie for four. Dignitas being 3-0 against 100 Thieves in 2022 was not on my LCS bingo card no. a couple of months ago. But that is where we are at. 1-0, obviously, in the spring split. Yep. A very disappointing perplexing loss for 100 Thieves, but possibly a massive momentum shifter for Dignitas after this Super Week. They were on pace to have a five-game losing streak, which would be the biggest in the LCS. Getting this clutch win against 100 Thieves, moving themselves to four and five, only one game back of 100 Thieves now yeah. in the standings has got to be a big relief for them. Yes. Coming into the halfway point. Yeah, gotta correct myself. Tie for fourth would be five and four. That is where actually under these are in tie for third because they were the third place team. So wow. uh, there's this actually this kind of break uh, at that point now, you know, seven and two and then down from there. But uh, you are basing on the cusp of playoff position. Uh, Dignitas, I mean, the, the story had been uh, for years, right? Wow, a good early season and then something yeah. happens and the sky is falling. Sometimes it was roster changes, sometimes it was internal drama, who knows? But to come back and win this says, no, 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 we can right the ship. It's not that Dignitas descent, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we're turning it back up. We're gonna we're gonna keep climbing here. And I mean, it was good to see River have such a commanding game. It was good to see Biofrost just completely pop off. Yep. Like those were big moments that I want to see more of from those players. Really big Tom Kent performance. River had like one of the weirdest games, right? Yeah. He he ended up getting that double buff off of the weirdness that happened in top lane and then really snowballed that for the rest of the game. And like Honestly, Blue just popping Abadaga at the start of the game set them up for so much success. Yep. A lot of stuff happened in that game. And Dig 